I wish I had known. So many mornings, so many afternoons, so many hours, so many minutes, even seconds, a million and one thoughts times 30. Then multiply that by the very least 180 days of school. And that's just in my head. Every morning, sometimes early, sometimes late, but there, those great minds come barreling through my classroom door. Okay, I'll be honest, with fifth graders, it's usually sleepwalking into my classroom, more like brain-eating zombies than the brain surgeons I know they are. I look at each of them and wish, for a second, I could hear inside their thinking. And I am always thankful, dearly thankful each day, that they can't hear inside mine. Or can we? A few years ago, I found myself in a really bad place. I mean, not a bad place as in a dangerous place, but bad as in an emotional, draining, low place in my life. I still showed up in my classroom, just like them, each day. I struggled just to get up and out of the house, but I showed up, just like them. After a couple of days, during a way too quiet math class, a boy in my class sheepishly raised his hand. I called on him to see what questions he was needing help from me. The rest of the class got even more quiet, if that's even possible for fifth graders. He paused, looked at me, and then asked, Mr. Ewing, why are you so sad? I felt like I had been hit by a speeding train. I froze. I trembled. They had never once asked me a question like this. I was speechless. Simply speechless. Tears started rolling down my face, but I composed myself and I told them that I was, in fact, very sad. I paused again. Then I told them, very frankly, that I had to tell them something and that I felt terrible about what I was about to say to them. I said, many times you've asked me if I was married, and each time I told you that I wasn't, just me and my three dogs. After a bit of silence, I told them that I had in fact lied to them. Now, in my defense, but absolutely not a good excuse, I held back the fact because I taught in a bit of a religious community with a lot of immigrant children from families that came from cultures that would not support the knowledge of my marriage. You see, I was married to a man, and this was not something I wanted to get in the way of them having an amazing teacher. I continued, You guys, I lied to you about being married. I have been married for 14 years, but I am now getting a divorce. I still didn't disclose any information about my husband, but they didn't even seem to miss a beat. A girl in the back raised her hand. I called her name, tears still in my eyes. She asked, Mr. Ewing, can I give you a hug? I just opened my arms. She walked to the front of the class and wrapped her arms around me. The rest of the class all got up, formed a line, and every student in that class gave me a hug. No questions, no judgment, just showing me they cared and that they loved me. My other fifth grade class, upon hearing the news, and it didn't take long, all wrote me get well cards. Each day after that, the hugs kept coming, and day by day, it was easier and easier to be there with them knowing that they showed me they cared about me. I wish I had known. Ten years ago, if you asked me if my students could read my mind, I would have said, impossible. Now, if you ask me, I will tell you, most definitely. Okay, can they really? Not sure. But they asked. If a student falls asleep in my class, I put a coat over them. If a student is having a bad day, instead of scolding them, I ask them if they're hungry or if they got enough sleep last night. 
If they're bouncing off the walls instead of sending them out, I ask them to share their excitement with the class. If a student is sneaking food, I ask them if I can get them something else to eat. Some students, I just sit with and talk about their day, their weekend, their nights. If those students hadn't asked me, they would have never known my pain, but I would have never given them the opportunity to show me they cared. If only I had known.